I'm going to predict the exact specs of the Quest 2, Darren Brown style, coming now. Hello and welcome to the VR Cauldron, I'm Al and today we're talking about the Oculus Quest 2, more specifically the exact specs. So as many of you might know, Facebook Connect is coming next week on Wednesday, September the 16th. At the event, which will be taking place online due to COVID-19, many of us are expecting to hear the announcement of the new Oculus Quest virtual reality headset. Actually, it's pretty much a given. If you remember, leaked images of this device appeared on the 24th of July, and I talked about it in a video I posted in the early hours of the 25th of July. Yeah, that's how fast you get it over here. Well, here we are, and I've put my speculation t-shirt back on, and with all the info and discussion we now have, I'm going to lay it all on the line with my final predictions for the Quest 2 ahead of next week's hopeful reveal. I'll be talking about its specs, including resolution, field of view, refresh rate, and I'm even gonna try and guess the chipset, Oculus Link and PC connectivity release date, and what it means for the Rift S, as well as the original Quest, going forward. Will the current Quest be able to play the new games and should you sell either headset? Remember, this is all speculation based on my feelings, logical deductions as well as research. Take it all with a grain of salt and feel free to argue with me in the comments. If you love a good VR discussion, I know I do, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell and with that, in we go. First up, Let's talk about what we pretty much think we already know. We know it has one single earphone jack instead of one on either side, like the current Quest. It has an elasticated strap, it's, at least it looks like it, instead of a plastic one with Velcro. It has the same audio solution pumped through the strap and it will be lighter and less front heavy with more of the weight closer to your face. And it's white. It doesn't have an IPD slider, and this is where we get into the true speculation, and you may have heard some of this bit said before. I believe, as do many, that there will be three preset positions for IPD. Wide, middle, and narrow. I personally don't think there will be a switch. I believe you'll have to physically move the lens cups yourself, and that will cause the number to change the number that you can see on the inside of the headset. If you look closely at the inside view of the headset, there appears to be some kind of grip for the fingers to get a good purchase on the lens cup. Not that I imagine you'd actually need that. This also brings us on to the screen, which I now believe will be a single LCD panel, as seen in the Rift S. As you move the lenses to switch IPD positions, I believe the images on the panel will move too, offering a hybrid mechanical and software solution, unlike the fully mechanical method that the Quest 1 currently has, with its two Pentile OLED displays that can move. One of the reasons I don't think there'll be a switch that adjusts the IPD is because I think that could easily break and it would cost more to manufacture. Whilst we're talking about the screen, we might as well talk about the resolution. The resolution of the current Quest is 1440 by 1600 per eye, or overall 2880 by 1600 total. I believe the resolution will be unchanged and still be 2880 by 1600, but now on an LCD screen, which remember has three subpixels instead of the previous two on the Pentile OLED display, this means that the resolution will appear much better without having to push more pixels. Remember that this resolution is the same as the £1,000 Valve Index, which also has LCD panels, although it does have two of them like the current Quest. So sticking with the screen, I believe the field of view will be improved, mainly due to the fact that the field of view is heavily influenced by how far the lenses and the screen are from your eyes. The headset seems a little narrower than the old Quest, and because field of view is 
hugely important to immersion, i.e. they want the highest field of view possible, they will try to get it as large as possible. I'm going to go with an increase of about 10 to 15 degrees diagonally. Oculus don't like to publish field of view figures as they are different for everyone, but I think it will be definitely increased. Let's quickly talk about the tracking, which will still be inside out with four cameras. However, the tracking will be slightly improved due to the placement of the cameras at the top of the device. They will now be able to track behind a little better than before. But let's not forget the tracking before on the current Quest is already really good and ahead of much more expensive headsets like the Vive Cosmos or the Reverb G2. There's not really a measurement that we all use for tracking volume, so I'm just going to call it a bit better. Now let's predict the chipset. The current Quest contains a Snapdragon 835, which is a mobile processor used in phones. It was seen in the Samsung Galaxy S8 and was released back in 2017. That's two years before the Oculus Quest. I don't think the new Quest will have a Snapdragon 835 still, and I don't think it will have one of the older Qualcomm XR1 chips. If we follow the Snapdragon chipset releases, I think we'll find one that will be used in the new Quest. So, after the 835, the 845 was released at the end of 2017 and was used in the Samsung Galaxy S9. It could well have this chip, but it is used in flagship phones that are two generations old. 8 series chips don't tend to get used in lower range phones because they're seen as performance chipsets. Therefore, I think they will use the Snapdragon 8. 55, which incidentally was the best Snapdragon at the time of the Quest 1's release back in May 2019. They have since made an 855 Plus as well as an 865 and an 865 Plus as well as the XR21. The Snapdragon 855 is used in the Samsung Galaxy S10 which is still in production and readily available. I think the Snapdragon 855 is the sweet spot in terms of price and performance. Now as I was writing this script a video dropped from the great YouTuber called Eric for President who like me loves a bit of speculation. In the video he shows a leak for a new box at a shipping centre that it could be the new Quest box. The box has a big XR on it. However, I don't think it means that the Quest will contain the XR2 chip. The current XR2 would make the Quest 2 too much of a loss for them to sell at 299 in my humble opinion. If you want to see the box, you'll have to go and stop by his video. I'm not going to put it on this video. I've left a link to his video in the description below. Tell him that I uh, sent you if you haven't seen his video yet. So what is this new power going to do if it's not going to be pushing extra pixels? Well, I believe this new headset will be 90 hertz so that the extra power will primarily push the extra frames per second to give us a much smoother refresh rate and better experience in the headset. Personally, I'm absolutely fine with the current 72 hertz, but then maybe that's because I'm just used to it and it's pretty close to the 80 hertz that I have in the Rift S. The 90 hertz will come in handy because this is the standard for PC VR gaming and I think Oculus will want this to be a very capable PC VR headset. But obviously the mobile processor has no bearing on the 90 hertz when it comes to PC VR. So let's talk about PC VR. I believe the new headset will be packaged with a link cable not a USB 2 charging cable that can be used as one, but a fully fledged USB cable that can do it really well. I just bought this 5 meter one for $8.99 on Amazon. I haven't tried it yet, but it has got some really good reviews. So I think that the new owners will get one too, and that will spell the end of the official Oculus Link cable, unless they position it as some kind of super duper cable. Of course, the new headset should still have access to Virtual Desktop, and the creator of Virtual Desktop, Guy Godin himself, has told me that he thinks that his program will work with future headsets. That's good news for me and lots of other people, as I pretty much always use my Quest now to do wireless PC VR. They're definitely invested in PC VR, so we don't need to worry about them moving away from that market, especially when titles such as the new Medal of Honor are advertising that it's available on Quest, with Link. And let's face it, Facebook have funded most of the mega budget AAA games on VR so far. Something I could also see them doing down the line, but maybe not with the release of the Quest 2, is making their own version of the virtual desktop's ability to stream wirelessly. So look out for that in the future, but I don't think that will be coming with the Quest 2 straight away. I'll talk more about PC VR later when I talk about the Rift 
S. So let's talk about the price. And I'm going to go with the new price leaks that we've already seen for the mysterious point raise listings where they've used an Oculus Go picture. The prices are $299 for a 64GB version and $399 for a 256GB version. So that means we also have the capacity to 64 and 256. I don't believe the headsets will be different. I think the price difference is just so small that if you get such a massive increase in memory capacity, you're not also going to get a bump in the processor or anything extra for the 399 model. It's already a massive difference 64 to 256 is huge plus if they had two different models they would need two different production lines and Facebook need as many people in their headsets as possible if the 399 model offers some kind of good upgrade as well as the extra space then they're not going to sell as many 299 models and the whole point of a 299 model is that it's cheap and it gets people to buy it think about the current quest most people agree that 64 gigabytes is more than enough, so they went for the cheaper model. I do wish it was 128 and 256 though. 64 to 256 is a massive jump that really makes me want to spend the extra, even though I probably won't need it. They're using the cinema popcorn pricing technique that makes you want to pay the little extra for the next size up, that then makes you think, oh, I'll pay a bit more for the next size up, and you end up buying the super size one, and you don't eat it all anyway. So, will it be a Quest Lite? Well, based on what I've just said, in a word, no. Shops are now saying the Quest 1 is discontinued, and the Quest 1 being discontinued means it can't be a Quest Lite, especially in name, since you don't call anything a Lite if it's the only thing in the product line. It just doesn't make sense. Therefore, it has to be seen as an upgrade. Not an upgrade like the Rift S was over the original Rift, though. Compared to the original Rift, the Rift S lost good audio, an IPD slider, the deeper blacks of the OLED panel, 90 hertz became 80 hertz, and the only thing it gained was a sharper screen. That's why people saw it as a 1.5 rather than a Rift 2. But with the Quest 2, Oculus have learned how to do all the things of the previous generation, but cheaper. It won't feel as premium on the outside, but it will be better in nearly every way on the inside. If my predictions are right, and that it's an LCD screen, then the only downgrade will be the black levels, but with the advantage of the much sharper display. So it's not really a downgrade at all, it's just a different option. It's like calling pasta a downgrade over a potato, because pasta chips aren't as nice as potato chips. So, the release date. The first Oculus Quest was announced at Oculus Connect 5 back in September 2018. It was then released the following May, that's eight months later. So I'm going for a release date of May 2021. <laughs> Joking, I'm not really, not really. They really want to hit the holidays with this one. I think they see this as being one of the biggest Christmas presents of 2020. Plus, we've already seen listings saying early October. However, if the Quest 1 has truly been discontinued, then they really want it out as soon as possible. No Quest being available means some desperate people are going to buy a different headset and Facebook won't have that, especially with the release of the Reverb G2, which is looking very, very good indeed. So I'm going to go for the pre-orders, available a week after the announcement, with orders being fulfilled two weeks after that. So basically early October, as we thought, based on the leaks anyway. So I think I've covered the Quest 2, which by the way, I think will be called either a Quest 2, or judging by that box, they might be going for a Quest XR. I'm going to stick with the Quest 2, but if it ends up being Quest XR, then I'm going to say that I called it anyway. So where does this leave the good old Quest 1? Well... Here are my predictions for that. It is going to be totally discontinued, no longer manufactured. It costs them more to make. It will be a lesser model, so there's absolutely no point making it. The only reason you would choose it over a Quest 2 is if somehow the IPD solution for the Quest 2 didn't work for you, or you really like the look of the Quest 1, or you're desperate for the deeper blacks of an OLED panel. So should you sell your Quest 1? I don't think so. For one, if you sold it to someone now who didn't know about VR, then you're actually conning them, and I would never recommend someone do that. If your only worry is whether games won't work anymore, then I don't think you need to. 
worry. I think the games will run just as good on the old Quest as they do on the new one. The only difference is that on the new one, they'll be running at an extra 18 frames per second more. So think of it like this. It'll be like playing Half-Life in a Valve Index compared to a Rift S. They both work absolutely fine. It just looks a bit better in the Index. Remember, to get the great Index visuals, you do need the beefier PC to run it. Also, developers would be very foolish right now to make a game that doesn't run on the Quest 1, considering how many people have one. And people have been buying the Quest 1 right up until they weren't available a few, a few days ago. Remember, the Quest line is supposed to be fully backwards compatible, unlike what we've seen with games consoles. Therefore, we might start seeing some simple graphics options going forwards. I'm talking really simple, not like with PC games. Just maybe a, a high and a low setting, where the low setting just reduces the resolution of some textures and maybe removes some particle effects or background animations. Really simple things like that that don't affect the gameplay at all. I do believe that at the start of the Quest 2's life, the processor will rarely be troubled and have quite a bit extra in the tank, even after pushing the extra 18 frames per second. I do think that when we get a Quest 3, if the Quest 2 sold really well, like millions, only then will we start seeing games that don't work too well on the Quest 1. So right now, you don't need to sell as if you are okay with the 72 hertz and the current resolution, which I have no issues with at all, or future pre-Quest 3 games should work just fine. Plus, you have a nicer looking headset with a cool IPD slider. I want to keep mine, but because I want to be a VR YouTuber, it always looks cool to have more headsets in the background, like my um, Gear VR. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to have a dev kit. For those people who decide to stick with the, the Quest and Oculus, I can imagine them settling into a two machine cycle like a lot of us do with phones. For example, I usually get a two year contract with my phone and because new models come out every year, I've had the Samsung S7, S9, and now the S20. I don't think Quest will be going to a yearly release though, so each headset should last you about three to four years if you start buying every other one. So my predictions for the Rift S. Sadly, I don't see a future for the Rift platform. That is, I don't think they're gonna bother with another Rift after the Rift S. The Quest 2 will be their answer to both mobile and PC VR. Currently, the Rift S is still a fantastic PC VR headset, so there's absolutely no need to sell unless you really want the new Quest and you need to sell it to fund that. So the Quest 2 will not do PC VR better but the bump in processor power might help improve the image quality through the link cable compared to the Quest 1. So for now, the Quest 2 as a PC VR headset will have a higher resolution, refresh rate and field of view than the Rift S based on my predictions, but due to the compression through the link cable, the image quality will probably seem to be about the same. So that's what I think about the Rift S and for now, that's all I've got to say about the Quest 2. 2. 2. Two. So to recap, it's going to be called a Quest 2 or a Quest XR and will be pretty much better in every way apart from the materials used. But no need to sell any current Oculus headset because the Quest 1 will still play the games and the Rift S is still really good for PC VR, especially for the price. So I'll be keeping an eye on Facebook Connect to see how I did. After we know for sure, I'll probably post another video saying what the new specs are going to be and comparing it to what I thought. So feel free to come back here to this video and make fun of me for being totally wrong after Wednesday. So Facebook Connect is this Wednesday, the 16th of September, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is 6 in the evening here in the UK. So in Europe, it'll probably be about the same time. Will you be watching it? Let me know in the comments and let me know what you think the next quest is going to be. We've only got a few days now until we find out for sure. So if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tasty discussion, remember to subscribe as well. I've been Al. Thanks for watching this VR Cauldron. Take care of yourselves and I hope to see you next time. See ya. Close your eyes when I'm upside down.